Hey there, everybody. It's Matt from Anytime Towing in Vermont. Um, I'm doing a little video today kind of about the hot truck, hot shot trucking kind of side of things. It's kind of what, it, what I started to do in the auto transport is using a gooseneck and a pickup truck. Um, I have a Class A. I'm capable of getting bigger trucks if I wanted. Um, I kind of chose to stay under CDL right now kind of for a couple of reasons. Um, sorry, my rough road here. Um, I'm in Oklahoma. I'm heading into Texas here. I've got a camper that's going into Arizona. And then I got to pick up a, looks like a couple Razor UTVs to bring from Arizona to California. And then I have a box truck that I'm going to put on my gooseneck and bring that back to New England. Um, this video is to kind of touch on the, the money side. There's been a lot of videos, a lot of questions about part time in it, um, getting your authority, the insurances. Um, I kind of did a video on insurance for the towing side of things and I kind of regret that because really there's so much variances and in insurances and coverage and once on what someone might need in the areas and all that stuff so I mean I, I'm not gonna even touch the insurance part on this I can tell you from what I hear you know people are paying anywhere from six seven eight hundred bucks to you know upwards of two thousand dollars a month for you know a truck and trailer hot shot I'm not going to get into my insurance and, you know, the towing and the transport part. Um, I, I run my own authority. I've got, you know, my DOT, my MC, my whatever the hell the new UCR number is, all that fun stuff I had to do. Um, it was kind of a pain in the ass, really. you got to kind of have an insurance company that familiar with DOT and all that stuff so that's just going to be the only thing I say is you know make sure you get an insurance company that knows what the hell you're talking about um, so I'm not, I'm not going to touch on insurance too much I'm going to touch on my truck and trailer and the CDL and non-CDL aspects first it seems like everybody there's a lot of confusion about CDL when you need it when you don't um, let's talk about GBWs, the tags on the door of your truck and the tag on the trailer. Um, that's where your CDL is going to come into. When you're talking hot shots, you're looking at a combination weight of 26,000 or more um, for a CDL. Anything under 26,000 is non-CDL. I'm under 26,000 right now with this truck, so I do not need IFTA. I have bigger trucks at home that kind of stay local. Uh, I don't take those out. It's mainly heavy wreckers that I use locally. I have yet to use one to move anything big. It seems like my new snack pretty much does everything I need to. Um, but anyways, combination weights. This door tag on this Dodge is 10,000 pounds. Tag on the trailer is 15,000 pounds, so obviously that's 25,000 pounds. This is an under CDL setup. It's got three axles on it. It is derated to 15,000 pounds, um, so it's an under the CDL setup. You know, you get into dualies, you know, anywhere from the 350s to the 550s or Dodge 3500s to the 5500s or Rams, whatever you want to call them. And then you'll get into uh, different variances on your door tags, anywhere from 12 to 14,000. Um, so if I was driving a dually with a 12,000 pound tag on the door in this trailer, that brings me up to 27,000 pounds. So I'm over 26. That means need a class A CDL. Anything 2601 and over is class A. Um, you know, 
same thing if I had this truck, this is a 10,000 pound truck, if I had a bigger trailer on the back, if that trailer wasn't derated from 18 to 15, then I would be at 28,000 with EDC CDL. But because it's derated, um, it keeps me under CDL. Now, registrations, you have to register the pony and not the carriage. So the trailers, the registration, at least the way it's worked so far that I've noticed in Vermont is anything over 1,500 pounds is X amount of dollars. It's, there's not much to it. You pay your taxes when you register it. Um, all the registration costs is in the truck. So this truck is registered for 25,099 pounds. That's just where the line was. Um, truck and trailer tagged are 25. I'm registered at 2599. So basically, I can put, <coughs> excuse me, I can put roughly 13, 13,000 pounds on this combination right now. Um, it's a 32 foot gooseneck triple axle. Um, and the trucks and trailers together weigh like 12,000 or 125 or something. Uh, so it's not a, not a heavy, heavy duty setup, but it, it carries its weight pretty good. Um, so this truck and trailer is under CDL. You get into anything bigger, you know, dualies with a, the goosenecks you can run, they derate them um, as far as that goes. So the CDL question, over 26, CDL under 26. If you have a truck and trailer, it's a combination, so you need a class A. If you're running straight truck and you're over 26, it's just a class B. Um, air brake endorsements, all that stuff. You want to get all the endorsements right off the bat. Uh, and as far as that CDL question, that's pretty much how that goes. Uh, as far as this being successful and good money or not good money, I think that your area is going to be the variable. I think that how much time you want to be out on the road is going to be your variable. There's a lot of questions I've seen on other YouTubers' channels, and I think I had one guy ask me about part-time towing, but I'm going to say the hot shot part-time in it, I just, I can't see it making any sense. You know, some guys have full-time jobs, part-time in on the weekends. I mean, you got to have some kind of good setup good rates to be able to do that and pay all your insurances. I'm pretty sure that the insurance isn't going to break it up to four weekends a month for you. I'm pretty sure you can just pay a monthly rate. Um, so as far as part-time in it, you're still going to have all your expenses. <coughs> you won't have as much wear and tear and as many oil changes and all that stuff, but it just seems like you'd have to have one job to support another. So you do need money to get started. It's not like something you can barely scrape to get up and get going there's so many variables you got to put gas out to get started your insurance is out your authorities um, so part-time in it it's in my opinion strictly my opinion I can't make any sense of it um, I part-time hot shot in a sense because I have a towing business which already gives me all the equipment and all the stuff <coughs> basically most of the stuff is paid for either by the towing or you know by by these jobs themselves but really what got me started was being able to start with with the towing that being said if I break down I can get something you know call a tow truck get me right off the interstate wherever I can and I have the means to if I had to to come all the way down here with a heavy wrecker tow all my stuff back or finish the job or get a different truck. I, I have the means to be able to save myself. I can see that being super expensive for anybody who doesn't have that. So on the emergency side of things, I can work on my own truck. I've got everything in my trucks to rebuild, you know, uh, just about rebuild an axle. Obviously I can't replace an axle. But I have all the backing plates, I have extra bearings and brakes and pretty much everything extra. 
have the means to do that. If you're not mechanical, I could see that being a problem and a big, big expense. Um, I, I bought this trailer. I think we paid 3000 bucks for it. I went over it quick. I took it on one trip. And I came back and I went right through it with all new brakes, vacuum plates, uh, bigger bigger axle brakes that, you know, um, there's three 6,000 pound axles on the trailer and I got the 7,000 pound vacuum plates and brakes just because I could, a little bigger. Um, everything else is pretty much the same. So as far as what I use, I, I have, my expenses were already out there so I didn't have to go spend you know, I got a 2016 Ram, which was pretty much already paid for, not paid for, it was already bought for the other aspect of plowing and using it as a service truck, and I'm going to use it for personal use, a little bit of everything. So I already had the truck, all I had to do was buy, buy that one trailer to kind of, you know, do what I needed to do. I moved, I moved more projects and personal vehicles through, you know, references by way of mouth or, you know, maybe a website or whatever, my own website or Facebook, and then I, I tend to get on, I tend to get on and look for my backhauls on, you know, different load boards, I'll get into load boards later, <coughs> but some of the load boards have led me to relationships, so now I can move some stuff for some other guys pick and choose some of my loads. So I can part-time it mainly because I work full-time towing. I'm moving vehicles pretty much 24-7. Um, if I'm on the road, I'm driving as much as I can, as much as I'm allowed to. When I'm at home, I am pretty much rocking it 24-7. Uh, you know, I, I tend to do as much work as I can before I call my employees. Mainly just because I don't want to have to deal with it. Excuse me when I get a water skin. Mainly just because I'm the one that likes to deal with it. I don't want to be one to uh, be passing the buck all the time. They do a lot when I'm gone. In case of water, my passenger seat. Uh, I'm trying to give up the monsters. I'm still drinking them though. Uh, so, anyways, I, I had a load out basically going to Arizona, so I found a load coming back. The load coming back actually pays more than one cup going out. All said and done, it's pretty much $2 a mile, all paid. Um, as far as loaded or unloaded, I'm pretty much loaded most of the time. There's some dead end miles. <coughs> um, from the UTVs to where the box truck is. Actually, with the UTVs, that's probably going to be like 225, 250 a mile. Um, you know, paid. That's all my miles calculated. So I don't know how you want to say that. So you know, all miles around 225 to 250 a mile. You know, there's a lot of expense in heading out here. All the fuels on me, the tolls are on me. I got five axles, so I basically get charged when the tractor trailer gets charged. New England is hell on tolls, um, so you kind of have to have a little bit of a of, of the means to be able to put the money out to even get get the load to where it's going because we don't get paid until it gets dropped. Um, some of the project stuff and the the higher end stuff, most of that stuff gets paid half down, half when we get dropped. That way we're not running out to California from Vermont for nothing. I I run Fords and Dodges. We'll touch on that right now in this video as well. Um, I am more of a fan of the Rams and the Cummins motor. That's sort of why I bought a Cummins powered rollback. I, I love the engine braking. It pretty much almost stops me. Um, so I'm a fan of the Cummins. I am I'm not bashing the Fords, the six sevens. Um, we're running that in one of my rollbacks. I, I've got no problems with it. I've been fortunate. We tow a lot more Fords and Chevys back to the dealers than we do the Dodges. 
partially why I've kind of moved to Cummins. Uh, for, a, for a few years there, I was running gas even in my medium duties because of all the emission problems, which I was avoiding. I was, I was towing those guys in with my gas truck. So anyways, that's I run a Ram. This is a 2016 Ram. I think I paid 35,000 for it used. Just over 100,000 miles. And I absolutely love this truck. It pretty much outperforms my F350 as far as even power, handling the loads, all that stuff. I just feel like this truck is a much better ride. Um, I'm gonna kind of sh stop this video here soon. I, I tend to ramble on about things, so as far as that goes, I wanted to touch on the CDL part. I wanted to touch on, you know, the trucks I use, and I wanted to touch on the part-time piece of it. it. Seems like there's a lot more videos that are coming out from some of these YouTube guys that are have been pretty much inspirational for me and where I've gotten a lot of my information it seems like there's a lot more videos coming out of these guys that are you know kind of showing the true colors of everything and not just the shiny part you know um, we all have these aspirations to be on the road and see the country and you know everybody talks about how many how many miles and what their mileage are getting paid and you know I, I think it all varies and what you're using really really uh, makes a huge difference on you know what the outcome is going to be <coughs> you're going to buy a brand new truck brand new trailer you know and you don't have the means to kind of have backup money because even the stuff brand new is going to go down I mean it, they, there's failures you're going to have you might have to get towed bring it back to the dealer you could be down a week so these things all happen with brand new vehicles so what happens when that happens to you you know it's I've been fortunate with this Ram I bought it at 30,000 miles and I have hammered on you know basically 70,000 miles on it in less than a year that's with plowing doing service calls pretty much running all over the country so this this truck has been really good to me there's no deletes, there's none of that stuff. I'm pretty much going to run it as long as I can. I mean, I'm hoping to put 400,000 miles on this truck. Um, I do plan on buying a dually at some point, probably next summer, and then hand this off to my sister as the work truck or whatever. So who knows, you know, how that will pan out when it comes time. Um, so yeah, hot shotting part-time. I, I can't see it making sense. I mean, if you've got a, a connection or a direct contact, you're not dealing with a broker. I'm not sure what the broker would be, you know, booking only weekends for you. And, and it makes sense that way. I mean, they're going to take a good chunk of that money. Dispatching, if you're not dispatching yourself, they're going to take a piece of that money. I'm not a broker fan. I haven't, as far as I know, I haven't touched a broker load yet. And pretty much every website I get on, I'm like, are you a broker? They tell me yes. I, I don't care what the load pays. I pretty much am done. I already know they're probably already taking 20 to 40 percent right off, and then dishing it out to someone else. They probably pulled it off the load board, promised somebody everything in the world to go with it, and don't even have a truck sent or even thought about how to get it yet. So, not a big fan of brokers. So, I mean, I know there's good ones out there. Don't get me wrong. And just like everything else, you know, everybody talks about a good tow guy and a bad tow guy. And, you know, there's people knocking hot shots. I think there's a place for it all. I'll do another video probably on the hot, tr hot shot trucking versus semis and why I haven't gotten a semi yet. I mean, I drive heavy wreckers and all that stuff. I can tow them all. Why don't I have one? It just it doesn't make sense to me as far as that goes. And I, I enjoy the hot shot trucking part of it being able to pull in and out of restaurants and Walmarts and, you know, I can get away with hanging out in places that big trucks can. Um, but yeah, I guess that's it. I'm going to cap this video here. I tend to ramble on. I know 20 minutes, somebody's not probably not listening to me anymore. So. <laughs> uh, 
I'll drop it right here. Anyways, I'll be back. Talk to you guys later.